Hi Learning Place, in this video we're going to be going through the importance of the atmosphere for your AQA A level in environmental science. Now, to help you remember everything you need to for the exam, to go with this video over my website, there's a set of flashcards and a set of flashcards all available for you for free. Lesson 2 The Importance of the Atmosphere. In the last video, we looked at the structure of the atmosphere as well as how energy is delivered to us from the sun. In today's lesson, we will look at the reasons why the atmosphere is so important for life on Earth. This section links nicely back to the conditions for life on Earth section, where we talked about the mass of the Earth holding the atmosphere in place due to gravity. The atmosphere provides gases for natural processes such as respiration and photosynthesis. Organisms uptake a range of gases from the atmosphere including oxygen for aerobic respiration, carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, nitrogen gas for protein synthesis and water vapour for photosynthesis. These molecules are then used in a range of metabolic processes to create biological molecules such as carbohydrates, lipids and proteins which form the biomass of living organisms. These processes allow our cultivated plants and animals to grow, which provides an essential food source for humans. The atmosphere also absorbs incoming radiation from the sun. If you think back to conditions for life on Earth, we talked about harmful solar winds that are deflected by the magnetosphere. The upper atmosphere also has a role to play in deflecting some of this and preventing it from reaching Earth. Furthermore, the ozone layer in the stratosphere absorbs harmful UV radiation, reducing the amount that reaches the Earth's surface. This is essential for life on Earth, as UV can cause mutations, cataracts and leaf tissue damage when in high doses. The atmosphere also prevents the escape of infrared radiation, IR, or heat, into the atmosphere. If you think back to last lesson, we learned that the sun's energy enters the atmosphere as UV radiation, which is absorbed by the ground and then re-admitted as IR. Although global warming is a man-made phenomenon, the greenhouse effect is actually a natural process. The gases such as CO2 are naturally occurring and they absorb the heat to prevent it escaping, warming the atmosphere. This is important as it ensures the temperatures remain warm enough for life to survive. The enhanced greenhouse effect is the result of human activities such as burning fossil fuels. We have substantially increased the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which has increased the warming a lot faster than it would have happened naturally. The atmosphere also plays a key role in distributing the heat that it absorbs. Due to the Earth's axial tilt, regions around the equator receive the most energy from the sun. Winds are created which helps transport this heat to other areas of the Earth. Winds are created when a pocket of high pressure air meets a pocket of low pressure air. The air will move from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure, creating wind. Wind is also important in creating ocean currents that will distribute warm water and nutrients from the equator to higher latitudes and the poles. Examples include the Gulf Stream. Furthermore, when winds displace surface water, this encourages the upwellings of cold, nutrient-rich water from the deep ocean. These upwellings are essential in supporting the food chains of certain ocean environments. The winds also help to transport water vapour to areas that would otherwise receive small amounts of precipitation. The presence of precipitation allows a wider diversity of life to survive in these areas. This whole process relies on the correct atmospheric pressure to ensure water can condense and return to its liquid state. If the atmospheric pressure was to get suddenly higher or lower, there would be no liquid water on Earth. Atmospheric pressure is created by the particles in the atmosphere being drawn to Earth by its gravitational pull. Finally, we are going to talk about the resources that humans utilise from the atmosphere. We extract a range of gases for different industrial uses. For example, we harness nitrogen and hydrogen gas to be used during the harbour process to create artificial, inorganic fertilisers for agriculture. We may also use carbon dioxide in the extraction of fossil fuels. 
Carbon dioxide can be injected into oil deposits to increase the pressure so the oil will flow out the ground easier, therefore increasing recovery rate. We can also harness inert or unreactive gases from the atmosphere, such as neon, which is used to make TVs, and krypton, which is used in photography. Global climate change. When trying to define climate change, it is essentially changes happening to the composition of our atmosphere that is altering the climate of the Earth. We are seeing an increased concentration of greenhouse gases, which are trapping more infrared radiation and warming the atmosphere at an alarming rate. It is really important that you are happy with the difference between the natural greenhouse effect and the enhanced greenhouse effect. Remember, the enhanced is the result of human activity releasing more greenhouse gases and essentially speeding up the warming. Burning fossil fuels is not the only way in which greenhouse gases are being released. Activities such as deforestation and permafrost melt are also releasing them. Furthermore, the melting of ice and snow is reducing the Earth's surface albedo, reducing the amount of UV that is reflected, so more is absorbed, heating the atmosphere further. It is important here to ensure you can name the anthropogenic, human activities that release a range of greenhouse gases. This knowledge is covered multiple times in the specification, so it is essential to know. Here are some examples to add to your notes. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.